reaping we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves we shall come for your many blessings. We want to thank you for helping us, dear God, so that we can help others. As we now move to another segment of today's worship service, we pray that you will abide and continue to be with us. Grant us your peace now, we pray in your son's name. We are going to go right into our praise and worship segment. And I invite you, as you prepare your hearts for the divine hour period, to turn with me to hymn number 294. Would you be free from your burdens of sin? There is power in the blood. Is there power in the blood this morning, Jesus? Uh, it, brethren, is there power in Jesus' blood? Definitely so, and so we are going to be using our voices to testify of the power in the blood of Jesus. Number 294. Would you be free from your burdens of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. 
wood you are evil a victory win there is wonderful power in the blood the church is singing there is power power oh wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power oh wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, oh, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's night. There is wonderful power in the blood. We're lifting the roof, there is Oh, oh, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, oh, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Would Jesus your King? Oh, there is power in the Oh, there is power in the blood. Would you live daily its praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power. Oh, oh there is wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. And the church is saying, praise the Lord. Amen. And because there is power in the blood of Jesus, we have to ask him to lead us. Lead me to Calvary number 317. King of my life, I crown thee now. 317. King of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall thy glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. second verse. Show me the tomb where thou hast laid. Tenderly mourn and Come on now. Angels in robes of light array. They are guarded me whilst thou slay. And everybody sing. Come on. Lest I forget yet seventy Lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. On my right, let me, let me like Mary through the gloom, and come with a gift to thee. Show to me now. Even the 
God is good, and all the time, God is good. Kindly listen to the following announcements. This afternoon at 2.30, we will have choir practice. At 3.30, we will have our Bible class, followed by our AY program, which will be at 4.30. Then Vespers will close the day. Our Sunday evening evangelistic service, chairperson, Elder C. Wong, Per and Scripture, Sister L. Spencer, and our speaker, Elder Winston McClary. Wednesday evening prayer meeting, chairperson Elder Jackson and speaker Elder K. Campbell. On our sick list, we have brothers Amon, Clark, and Guy. We have sisters Henry, Watson, Dawes, and Burroughs. Let us remember to visit our sick brothers and sisters where possible but to remember always to pray for them. To feed our lambs today is Elder T. Smith. February is celebrated as Family Life Month. There will be a series of activities planned for the family which you cannot afford to miss out on. And as such, Elder Jackson is asking all members of the Family Life team to meet with her immediately after a divine or service today. The rap session for the young people that was planned by Pastor Williams, it has been rescheduled for a date to be announced. So young people, you will soon hear the new date for this rap session. Youth Day will be celebrated on the 18th of February. That's February 18th will be Youth Day. And so Sister Dawkins is asking all the youth of the church to meet with her this afternoon following the Divine Hour service. Just a reminder that Orion's Band will be in charge of the AYS program next Sabbath followed by Pleiades Band, which will be on the 11th of February. Also on our sick list, which was accidentally left off, Sister Yusi Khan, her daughter, is here with us in church, and we want to continue to pray for Sister Khan that she will get well soon, if it is the Lord's will. There will be a community funeral service here tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. That's a community funeral service here tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Let us keep all these important dates in mind. The thought that I want to leave with us today is, it is Satan's purpose to bring about an eternal separation between God and man. But in Christ, we become more closely united to God than if we had never fallen. I wish for all of us a heavenly sitting today.
we invite the church to turn to the number 855 from your hymnal. Asking you to stand as you have done so. I'll read in your hearing as you follow. Lord God Almighty, none is as mighty as you. In all things you are faithful, O Lord. You rule over the powerful sea. You calm its angry waves. Heaven is yours, the earth also. You made the world and everything in it. How powerful you are. How great is your strength. Your kingdom is founded on righteousness and justice. Love and faithfulness are shown in all you do. Happy, how happy are the people who worship you in songs, who live in the light of your kindness. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The church is now called to worship. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning it's now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen Eternal Father and God we are truly grateful for your presence being with us. You have gathered us in your house of prayer once more. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings you have in store for us. As a matter of fact, the blessing which we have received from you. We come, Lord, also for to hear a word from you, even as we come with thanksgiving and praise. May our hearts, Lord, be receptive. May our life respond to your word that we may glorify you in all that we do. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for tabernacling with us. We thank you for your continued blessings. Amen. Amen. Kindly remain standing for the affirmation of faith. Exodus 20, 8 through 11, and we begin. Remember the Sabbath day to begin. Keep day shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Thank you. Kindly be seated. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, I don't know about you, but my soul cried out, Hallelujah! I thought the church would be on fire. I thought the church would say, Hallelujah! I thought the church, after experiencing such a week, would say, Praise the Lord! The privilege is mine to welcome us all into the courts of God today. Whether we are in the sanctuary physically or we are watching online, we know that where the presence of God is, his people must be on fire for him. What do you say? Amen. This morning, some of us may be coming for the first time or the second, or you may be a regular visitor, a new member, or a member that has been with the church from its construction. 
but I am here to remind us today that whatever stage we are, God is still open and ready to use all of us. Let us sit and bask in his presence, and I know that the Holy Spirit has a more than a cup full, a mug full, or a bowl full, but he has blessings in store for us. So sit, relax, and let the Holy Spirit pour out his blessing on us that we will leave here transformed and equipped to be better Christians to serve him. Welcome once, welcome twice, welcome thrice to this place where the presence of God dwells. Indeed, that was a rousing welcome. Thanks, Helda Smith. And by way of announcement, we should like to remind us that we'll be having work day here tomorrow for to maintain our plant. The hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, 517. to us the scripture passage. Our scripture, re Our scripture reading will be taken from Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 5. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by, caused me to pass by round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and ye shall live. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. and our griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Most holy, righteous, and eternal Father and our God. This morning, Lord, we come before your presence. Not because we have done anything good. Because, Lord, you said in, his, in your words, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. But because you are a loving, you are a caring, you are a compassionate Father, we have the privilege of coming before your throne of grace and mercy to tell you everything. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you this morning for allowing us to be awakened out of sleep in our rightful minds and mobility so that we could come in your presence to give you thanks. This morning, Lord, with gratitude of heart, we come before you. We ask, dear Lord, that you will forgive us of all our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness so that as we worship you today, we will do so in the beauty of holiness and you will hear and answer. We ask, Lord, that you will be with the sick among us and the afflicted. Great Dr. Jesus, balm in Gilead, this morning I pray, God, that you will stretch forth your healing hands and touch and heal according to your divine will and purpose. This morning we ask that you will be with our community we ask that you will be with every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who needs to know about you, Lord. Help us to be your mouthpiece. Help us, Lord, to be your footmen and women to go and tell others that Jesus is coming soon. And he is coming for a prepared set of people. Lord, we ask that you will give us the spirit of togetherness we ask that you will help us to be vigilant help us dearest lord to do your will we ask this morning lord that you will be with our country and our whole lord you will see the things that are happening around us and it tells that your coming is very soon even at the door so this morning lord i ask that you will help us that we will prepare ourselves this morning, Lord, here is your daughter, one who you have appointed to break the bread of life. I pray at this time, Lord, that you will hide her under the shadow of the cross. And I pray this morning, Lord, that she will not be seen, but it will be you only, I am lifted up. I pray this time, Lord, that you will tingle her brain cell 
that you will give her this speech in clarity and help her, dearest Lord, that as she speaks your word, they will come out fluently and each heart will receive and we will go and do likewise. Thank you this morning for this congregants. I pray that you will be with each worshiper this morning. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that are kneeling before your presence this morning. I ask for a special blessing. And at the end of today's service, may we all say it was good for us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us. And thank you, Lord, to know that we have the blessed hope of your soon return. We ask, Lord, that you will help that when that day should have come, that none of us here will be missing. But we all can say, this is our God whom we have waited for and is here to receive us. Until then, Lord, keep us faithful and keep us true. This is our humble asking with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We shall now be blessed with a phantom of praise by Elder Smith.
Could we retain the ocean fill and when it shines of parchment made where every Ascribe by trade the rising love of God above would drain the whole shame dry, nor could the scroll from sky to sky Oh love of God How rich and pure How measureless and strong St. Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, reminds us, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When God called Delmar and Natty and their three-year-old daughter, Carla, to serve as missionaries in Albania, the couple eagerly prepared to embark on a new adventure with God. They knew that living in a foreign country would stretch their comfort zone. It didn't take long to learn some of the challenges they would be facing as they worked to bring the gospel to Albania. For years, Albania had banned religion. Even today, religion isn't a priority for most people. There are only about 120 Adventists in Albania. The family was assigned to serve in the city of Korchok. They had great plans, but despite their efforts, few were interested in Bible studies. Delmar was discouraged. All their efforts had led to nothing. Then, 
the family received a call to pastor a large community church in Brazil. The offer, the offer seemed perfect, but Natty wasn't so sure. Do you think we are done enough we can hear? I feel that God has worked for us here. The couple decided to stay and pray that God would use them. Delmar and Natty noticed a lot of children in their neighborhood. Maybe working with children was a good place to start. The couple prepared a volleyball court and invited the children to come and play. These kids started coming to the churchyard to play. They got to know Delmar and Natty. Soon the churchyard was full of kids. They just needed to get them inside the church. Angela, one of the church members, brought her friend Fatian to join the fun. Fatian and Delmar started talking about God and then they began studying the Bible together. Delmar invited Fatian to be part of the youth group. Great, Fatian said. I want to help these kids to serve this community. Soon he was helping with the kids and the kids loved him. Fatian helped bring in the youth together and some began asking questions about God. Delmar was thrilled to baptize Fatian, his first baptism in Albania. The church group has added many faces. The church center of influence is now growing. As Delmar and Nati continue to serve on the front lines in Albania, we too can serve on the front lines of mission as we return our tithes and give our promised offering faithfully to God and his work. At this time, I invite our deacons. Let us pray. Loving Father, who art in heaven, we want to thank you for the gifts that you have blessed us with. As we now give back to your cause, we pray that you will continue to bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. We now wait on our deacons as they receive our tithe and our offering. <laughs> Be 
about boys and girls? Okay. Have you about bigger boys and girls? All right. So my story is going to be a short one today, and it's entitled The Smudge. What is it entitled? Smudge. The Smudge. Do you know what a smudge is? Well, <laughs> no, not a smudge. Okay. So the smudge is like a spot that mars or, or it, it messes up something. So there was once a little boy by the name of Danny. And he had two older brothers. Now, one day, it so happened that mommy and daddy were going to go somewhere for the weekend. And mommy put bigger brother in charge of Danny and his brother. And... Where they were going, which one was bigger? One of his brothers. You will hear a little more about him. So big brother, so mommy and daddy, they were going somewhere for the weekend, and they put big brother in charge. Now big brother was a little bit bossy. Who has a big brother or a big sister? Are they bossy? Yes. yes? Antoine loves to boss you around, don't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, and Aldane too. Mm-hmm. So we're knowing some secrets. All right. So the big brother, he was bossy. But for the weekend, he allowed Danny to do all that he wanted to do. When it came to Sunday, he knew that mommy and daddy, they were going to come back Monday morning. And so Big Brother said, no, it's no more time to play. Danny, we have to get to work. Now, Danny didn't love to work. How many persons love to work? Wow, wow, that is nice. Hmm, all right. Danny didn't like to do work. And so Big Brother said to him, come on, Danny, it's time to do this. It's time to do that because we have to get the house in order for mommy and daddy to come home. Yes, to rake the yard, to do everything. Danny got so mad that he took a big brush filled with polish and he threw it after his big brother. 
It so happened that the brush with all the polish missed his big brother and landed on mommy and daddy's white wall and made a big smudge, right? Danny was so frightened, he ran into the backyard and he hid all day. In the evening, big brother came and he took Danny out of his hiding spot and he Gave him something to eat and he carried him upstairs. He didn't say anything to Danny. Danny was fretting. Oh, you think he felt? You, feel, you think he felt afraid? Yes. You think he felt worried? Yes. yes. When he looked, when he was walking past, there was the big black spot on the wall. Yes. And he didn't know what to do because he knew that if mommy and daddy came home and, he, and they saw that spot, what do you think would happen to him? He would get beat. He would get it. Yes, yes. Anyway, he went to his bed that night. He couldn't sleep. He tossed. He turned. And what do you think he finally did? He prayed. He said, dear God, I'm so sorry for not being a good boy, but could you please help me? You think God listened to him? Mm. So the next morning, Danny didn't come down for breakfast. Daddy, Danny didn't come down any at all because he was still fretting, even though he had said his little prayer. When mommy and daddy came home and they called, say, come everybody. When they looked around, the place was looking so nice. When Danny came downstairs, guess what? The big black smudge was all gone. He turned to his big brother and he gave him a big hug and he whispered, did you clean it up? And his big brother said, Yes, I did. You see, his big brother said, Sometimes, Danny, you can get angry and you make mistakes, but I love you and I am willing to help you when you are sorry. And I saw that you were so sorry for what you did. I stayed up the entire night and I cleaned up that smudge for you. You know, that story reminds me of Jesus. Jesus is our big brother, don't it? And sometimes we make a big mess of things, don't it? But he is willing and he is able and he will stay up all night to fix what we have messed up, especially when we are truly sorry for what we did. So, boys and girls, today... Whatever you are doing that is wrong, what things you might do that is wrong? What things you might do that is wrong? Telling a lie, yes, what else? Hurting somebody, stealing, whatever it is, you have to stop it right away. And guess what? You can make wrong right, right? You can stop doing what is wrong and you can ask your big brother to help you not to mess up and to help you to be better boys and girls, don't it? Yes, yes. So this morning, I want somebody to pray for me that Jesus, our big brother, will cover our sins and make us better boys and girls, clean up our messes and help us to be better boys and girls all right who would like to pray come come babies come let us close our eyes Shavante, you want to pray as well come come Chevy all right everybody close their eyes all right let's start it small dear Lord thank for today dear Lord thank for today thank for our friends thank for brothers Thank for everybody in the church as we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your compassionate love. I thank you for watching over all your brothers and sisters. Lord, you are her, our big brother. Lord, guide us and help us when we do something wrong, and especially when we are really sorry. 
Lord, watch over us and protect us. Through your holy, precious name, I say amen. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for waking each and every one of us up today. Please continue to guide and protect us. In your loving name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. You may go back to your seats. Tell me the story of Thanks much, to, thanks much to Elder Terry for that message to the younger ones and to the older ones. Also, today to bring God's special message to us all, to the young and to the old, is one that loves children. The mother of two children, the wife of one husband one that has committed her life to Jesus and a hard worker for the Lord. Amen. I speak of no other than leader, Ke Marva Campbell. Kenesha is the name, but when it gives me trouble, I just say Marva, that one don't give me no trouble. She's the same person. And the Lord has called her to bring her word to his people Amen. this morning. I trust that you will pray her up in your heart, that God will strengthen her and give her utterance, that she will speak only that which God would have us hear from her concerning Jesus' love. Amen. Before Sister Campbell should come to us, we will have a song of meditation. heard once a bird has a broken wing it can never fly higher anymore but let me tell you what I know that it's not always so for once I laid broken and sore I fell from above Like a wounded dove With no hope of ever climbing again But with grace from above and God marvelous love, I'm flying higher than I've ever been. Higher than I have ever been, I'm flying higher than yesterday and today. Where eagles can soar, I can see heaven's door. I'm flying higher than I've ever been. I 
from the way like life's wounded prey then old satan like a vulture he swept low it was in my darkest hour that's when he came to devour that was left of my dying wounded soul but as low as life gets my god ain't finished with me yet he's seen more good than what i ever saw now i soar above the clouds so high in the clouds i can't even see the tops of the tree i'm flying high yeah than i have ever been i'm flying high higher than yesterday and today is sin where eagles can soar i can see heaven's door i'm flying higher than i've ever been where eagles can soar i can see heaven's door i'm flying higher than i've ever been i'm flying higher Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. Amen. I'm flying higher than I've ever been. Sister Jones, I'm so nervous. Brethren, God is a good God. God is a great and awesome God. I must say thanks to all those persons who took part in the program this morning. Ella Jones, for your kind words of introduction. It is still me. Whatever name I'm called by, I will answer. I just know that God is going to use me this morning. And I, brethren, just pray me up. Let's pray me up. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Our loving Father in heaven, mighty God, we come in your presence this morning because we just want to just magnify and glorify your name. Use me, Lord, like you have never used me before, and take away self and let you be seen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, growing up in this church, I was always very shy. And when I got up to speak, there would always be a love that forms in, this, in the throat right here. But over time, and with encouragement, especially from Sister Jackson, who is always saying, go on, go on, go on, do it. You can do it. So she's not taking a no. And this Dover church here, that all when they do foolishness, they give it the biggest amen. amen. I got over it. And now, brethren, I use my words. I speak and I talk. Sometimes I think I talk too much, but I speak when I have something to say. Today, my topic is speak life. Speak life. Sometimes, we live in a society that we have to be careful of what we say and how we say it. We have to think twice about the words we use because we can be sued for our words. Did you know that? Yes, yes ma'am. Because there is power in the tongue. We know that there's, they say that life and death is in the tongue. So, brethren, we have to 
be so careful. Our message today comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14, which was so ably read by Brother Aldre, who did a few verses of that chapter. But we're going to spend a few minutes in the book of Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones came to him after God had directed him to prophesy the rebirth of Israel in chapter 36. God announced to the prophet that Israel will be restored to her land in blessings under the leadership of David, my servant who shall be called, who shall be king over them. Ezekiel 37 verse 24. Clearly a reference to the future under Jesus Christ, the Messiah, descendant of David as recorded in the book of Isaiah chapter 7. This promise seemed impossible considering Israel's present condition. She was dead as a nation, deprived of her land, her king who was slaughtered, and her temple which was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. They were sacrificing their children to heathen gods. They were mixing and mingling with false gods and foreign nations that the Lord called his chosen people prostitutes. She had been divided and dispersed for so long that unification and restoration seemed impossible. The house of Israel was like unburied skeletons. They were in a state of living death, pining away with no end in sight. So God stepped in and gave Ezekiel this vision of the dry bones. Let me tell you, our God is not an ordinary God. Our God is a thank you, thank you, brethren. He specializes in things thought impossible. He is a miracle working God. This valley was filled with nothing but dry, bleached out bones. Hip bones, thigh bones, ankle bones, knee bones, you name them. All sorts of bones. Bones of all size and shapes. Let me interject here that this wasn't a normal burial ground where dead bodies were. This was a valley with just bones. Dead man's bones. This means that there was no life present in that spot. Everything there was dead. We are faced sometimes, brethren, with hopeless situations, like Israel. But John says, our God is the resurrection and the life. Though you are dead, you shall live again. The Lord said to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? I can just picture in Ezekiel's mind. He was spinning as to whatever question was this God was asking. He thought of the situation Israel was in, and he also recognized the God he served. He must have said like the songwriter, Jerah, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jerah, you are enough. So he just said, Thou knowest, because he knew he served a God of impossibilities. Yes. He was a God that could change anything dead into a living thing. Amen. He knew that with man things are impossible. But. but with God, all things, what do I say, brethren? All things are possible. He, Ezekiel, could see no life in these bones. The phrase, very dry bones is unique within the Hebrew scriptures. These aren't newly or recently dead. These are long, long dead. Years or decades. What's more, the word bones occur more often in Ezekiel 37, 1 to 11, than any Old Testament book except Job and Psalm. And that's a lot of them bones. He knew, like we do, that when a man is dead, he's what? Dead. There is no dopey. There is no coming back from the grave. 
until that great getting up morning when all those who are dead will be raised to see Jesus in his glory. Amen. I am sure there are situations in your life that are just dead. There are dreams that are just dead and dried up. And no matter how you try, brethren, you just can't revive them. They are just dead, dried out, and hopeless. But we know a God. We know a God that we serve that can make all things new. He is the God that raised Jairus' daughter from the dead in the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 43, and also recorded in the book of Matthew. She was dead. There was a morning posse people gathered from all over, bawling down the place because the little girl was dead. She was cold. There was no life in her. She was D-E-A-D. Yes, Mr. Jackson, stiff, cold, dead. He didn't stop there. He raised the widow of Nairn's son in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 11 through to 16. He was on his way to be buried. There was also a funeral procession going on. So, of course, we know that he was what, brethren? Dead. He rose, Lazarus, in Bethany, as was recorded in the book of John. He was already dead for four days. But let me remind someone that even when you think he's four days late, he's right on time. Amen. We would say that the conga worms were working their way, but our God specializes in dead things. I say our God specializes in dead things. He is the life giver. He is the I am. We can sing and rejoice. Ye pure in heart, rejoice, give thanks, and sing. The Lord told him to prophesy unto the dry bones and say, O oh, dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. Our God is so powerful that even the dead hear his voice. In the case of Lazarus, if he had not called Lazarus' name, all those who were in their graves at that time would have risen. So you know that we serve a mighty God that even the dead hear his voice. Life as a way of taking our joys and aspirations and casting them to the floor. How many of us had had plans that never materialized because of one reason or another, Sister Cardia? How many of us have lost relationships, family members, friends, and even jobs? Things look dead. Things look hopeless, dry and helpless. But when King Jesus steps into our dead situations, he shakes up those dead bones. He speaks life into our situation and causes our dreams to come through. Amen. I'm sure we all know the Red Sea experience. Oh, yes. I would call it a dry bones experience. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, we see the children of Israel standing at the edge of the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army at their back. There was nowhere to go. But let me tell you with Jesus, when you don't see a way forward, when you can't go backward, just look up for your redemption, draw it nigh. I tell you, when our backs are against the wall with everything and everyone around you has given up, when they are just dead, we have the life giver. We have to look to the peace speaker. We have to look to the problem solver. We must look to Jehovah Jireh. We have to look to our Jehovah Shalom. God told Moses, man, don't worry. Don't worry. Just stretch forth your rod. And let me tell you, brethren, the waters of the Red Sea start to bubble up. There must have been a loud roar as the sea started to part. I can just imagine, brethren, I don't know about it. If I was standing right there, I don't know. But can you imagine when they realized what was behind them? And when they saw the sea opening up, how oh, they must have shouted, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! We are on our way. They couldn't stand quietly. They had to rush out. 
because they knew that their deliverance was nigh. Yes. Brethren, when Jesus steps out, mountains have to fall, yes. seas have to part, yes. lives have to change. He speaks life over every situation. We serve a God that looks out for his people. He sees our every situation. He sees the words even before they start to manifest. I'm a warrior by nature, but you know, I worry over things. Or when I pray, I still worry. And my God knows what I am worrying about, even before I take it up. So we just have to learn to just let it go and let God. Amen. He said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the dry bones. Let us read verse number five and six. Verse five and six in Ezekiel chapter 37. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will what? Cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with what? Skin. And put what in you? And ye shall what? And ye shall know that I am the Lord, God said, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. It doesn't matter how far you are in trespasses and sin. It doesn't matter how far you have strayed from God. He will speak life into your walk. Because when man says it's finished, Christ reminds us that he is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. There is no end in sight when God is in the mix. Amen. He will lift you out of your merry clay and place your feet on solid ground. He will cause you to soar on wings of eagles. Amen. Let no one hold you back from your breakthrough. Let no man keep you from experiencing the joy of freedom in Jesus. Speak life, brethren, over your broken families. Speak life over your broken marriages. Speak life over your children that have gone astray. Speak life over your finances that will seem to never be stable. Speak life over your dead things. Speak life over your broken dreams. Speak life over any situation that will hinder you from fully surrendering to Jesus. This makes me so happy. What in verse 8, the impossible with man happened. It says that the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. There was a shaking as each bone, bone, is bone, is bone. Now can you imagine in a valley of dead man's bone that was scattered here, there and everywhere, each bone found its owner. The neck bone found the shoulder bone. The shoulder bone found the back bone. The back bone found the hip bone. The hip bone found the thigh bone. And the thigh bone found the knee bone. And the knee bone found the leg bone. And the leg bone found the ankle bone. And the ankle bone found the toe bone. Every bone was in place. We serve a mighty God. What a great God we serve. I feel like shouting. I feel like saying thank you, Jesus, because we serve a good God. Amen. If you know that God has brought you through some dry bones, say thank you, Jesus. If you know that God has taken you some trying things this week, say hallelujah, because we know that we serve a good God. I am thankful that God sees past my faults and he sees my needs. He sees my dry bones. He sees my dead, decaying, sinful state. And he reaches out to me to the sweet Holy Spirit. He says, my child, come, come, and I will give you rest. I will transform your life. I will change your broken situations into one of praise and thanksgiving. Amen. We also need to speak life over our spiritual life. 
The Valley of Dry Bones not only refers to our broken situations, but it also speaks about our broken spiritual lives. In the Home Devotional written by Ellen G. White, entitled Dry Bones Vivified, which refers to Ezekiel 37 verse 14, and it says that I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place in your land then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. It continues to say, it is not a human agent that is to inspire with life. The Lord God of Israel will do that part. Quickening the life of spiritual nature into activity. The breath of God must enter the lifeless bodies. In the judgment, when all secrets are laid bare, it will be known that the voice of the Lord spoke through the human agent and arose the torpid conscience and stirred the lifeless facilities and moved sinners to repentance and contrition, forsaking of sins. It will then be clearly seen that through the human agent, faith in Jesus Christ was as impacted to the soul and spiritual life from heaven was breathed upon one who was dead in trespasses and sin, and he was quickened with spiritual life. But not only does the simile of the dry bones apply to the world, but also to those who have been blessed with great light. For they are also like the skeleton of the valley. They have the form of men, the framework of the body, but they have no spiritual life. But the parable does not leave the dry bones, merely to knit together into the forms of men. For it is not enough that there is symmetry of limb and feature. The breath of life must vivify the bodies, that they may stand upright and spring into activity. These bones represent the house of Israel, the church of Christ, and the hope of the church is the vivifying influence of the Holy Spirit. The Lord must breathe upon the dry bones that they may live. The Spirit of the Lord must be in every human agent that every spiritual muscle and sinew be in exercise. Without the Holy Spirit, there is a loss of spiritual life. Many are without spiritual life, have their names on the church records, but are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They may be joined to the church, but are not joined to the Lord. It continues to say, they may be diligent in the performance of certain duties and may be regarded as living men, but many among those who have a name that thou livest and art dead. Revelation 3, verse 1. We cannot, brethren, be so complacent in our walk that we forget that we, what we are called to do. Yes. Brethren, we can't sit quietly in our comfort zone and believe we have reached. We sit in church and we feel that all is well. Oh, I am at church every Sabbath. I attend every Sunday night and every Wednesday night meeting. So that is enough. We think that we have done our part. But let me tell you, we are dead. We are the valley of dry bones. We need to realize our need of the Savior. We must be willing to surrender to him, not just giving him a flimsy worship, but we need to be totally wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. This means that we must walk and talk like Jesus, and we must live like Jesus. The world must know, brethren, whose you are. The world must know who you stand for. We can't be saying one thing and doing the other. We have to make sure that our walk reflects who we claim to know. Sometimes I know, even in our best intentions, we fail. We are human. We will come dead. 
I want to share just a little devotional with you. And this is a good book to read. I got it from Ella Jones. So if you're interested, you can get a copy. All right, so it says, and the title of it is The Power of Christ. One of the most inspiring books, it's, it reads, that I've read in recent years is A Thousand Shall Fall. It tells the fascinating story of the life of Franz Azel, an Adventist German who was forced to serve as a soldier in the ranks of Hitler's army. Due to the compulsory conscription practiced by the Third Reich, Hazel had to live out his military experience within the Nazi army. But he exalted his faith in God and remained faithful to him in all circumstances. Although it tells of many miraculous times in which France's spiritual greatness is shown, one of the most relevant aspects of reading this book is discovering that this courageous Christian was still a mere mortal. The author, Susie Hazel Mundy, recounts how a soldier named Leo usually had a mocking attitude towards France's religious life. He would jeer at him for being a creationist, a vegetarian, reading the Bible, and refusing to carry a weapon. One day, Franz got tired of being laughed at and very firmly told him, if you make fun of me one more time, I am going to beat you up. Leo did not take him seriously. And with one mighty swing of his fist, Franz knocked Leo unconscious on the ground. Then he rubbed his hands together with an air of triumph as he's saying, there, I showed you. Susie Aze Monday was Franz Aze's daughter. And she could have left out this part of her father's character, this flaw. But she decided to share it in her book. The Bible itself doesn't hide the mistakes of the great characters in the Bible. Noah was a drunkard. Jacob was deceitful. Peter denied Christ. Why? Because we should not forget that they were all people with a nature like ours. James 5 verse 17. The thing is, our humanity drives us to be dominated by the passions that voluntarily struggle within us. Passions that will oftentimes lead us like they led Franz Hazel to commit wrongful acts. Our great struggle is to put those evil desires, Colossians 3 verse 5, to death. We, brethren, have to make it our point of duty to put our dead things to rest. We have to realize that Franz Franz was a good Christian man. Franz was doing what he was supposed to do. But one little mistake, and Franz lost it. Franz lost his cool. And I'm sure many of us are like Franz when we're provoked. We get angry, and we tell people a piece of our minds. And we get down to their level. Not true? Yeah. Yes, man. Even when we think we are strong in our walk, we struggle at times. But that is when we need to call on Jesus. We need to call on Jesus, brethren. When we call on Jesus, all things are possible. When we call on Jesus, there is no problem. There is no test. There is no trial that we can't overcome when we call on the name of Jesus. Our very countenance, brethren, when people look at us, should scream, I am a child of the king. Even in our dry bones experience, we should be rejoicing. Brother, when you're having problems, don't walk or make everybody know you have a problem. Sometimes you have to keep it to yourself. Tell Jesus. Get down on your knees and pray. The world don't have to know that you're having a problem. They can only suspect you have a problem, but you serve a God who hears and answers prayers. We serve a God who knows our problems. We serve a God that anything 
that we need and if we call on his name, he will hear and answer according to his will. Yes. Brethren, let us not be mopey mopey. Let us not have donkey faces walking around. We serve a living God. We serve a God that is true and able. We have to live like Christ wants us to live. We have to reflect the character of Jesus. Even when he was beaten, even when he was, his body was broken for our sins, he did not give up. He did not curse them. He did not say, what are you not doing? He didn't say, let's get off of me. He humbly walked to the cross because he wanted to save you and me. Let us reflect the God we serve. We should be shouting hallelujah because we know we serve an awesome God. Jesus is alive and well. Look here, brethren. Let us put a smile on our face. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he never breaks his promises. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, we must wake up and realize that being a child of God is a verb. You know what is that verb, brethren? Huh? It's action, not a bag of mouth. Brethren, we have to do. We have to do. If we call ourselves Christians, we have to get up. We have to move. We have to speak life into a relationship with God. What does that mean? Just coming to church and warm the benches? Oh no, we must dig deep into the word of God. We must study. Brethren, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I have some children teaching over the division the there. And brethren, it pains my heart. It pains my heart. Because it starts right there. And if our children aren't studying if our children don't see the need for Jesus, when they get old like me, brethren, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? I asked a question this morning. I said to them, do you believe that you need to know more about Jesus? And one child said, no. No. Virgin, we're in a sad, sad state. Sad, sad state. We have to train our children. But we can't allow the devices to raise our children. We can't leave them and don't believe them because they're fierce, because they're rank when they're ready. Right? But we have to get on them. We can't leave them, brethren. We can't leave them to the devil because that's what the devil wants us to do. We have to get busy with our children. We have to instill in them the need to pray. The need to study their quarterlies. The need to read the Bible. How are we going to know about Jesus, brother, if we don't spend any time with him? How are we going to know him if we don't spend time with our Lord and Savior? It's not about coming to church in our night suit, Sister Jones, looking so sweet when we step into the sanctuary. But up here, there's no connection. There is no connection between you and God. God don't know us. God doesn't know us, brethren. We have to speak life into our spiritual walk. Yes. Brethren, we have to change this is not, this, if, if we don't realize what is happening, Jesus soon coming, our brethren. Jesus soon come. If you don't, if you never believe it before, you need to look around at what is happening right now. Now isn't the time for us to play church. Now isn't the time to just sit back in our easy chair and act as if it is business as usual. We have to rise out of our slumber. But then we have to get out of our nice homes and get on the battlefield for Jesus. We have to see the need to win souls for the kingdom of God. We have to save ourselves. But then we have to save ourselves. 
and don't leave the children behind. Don't leave our children behind. Get them to study. And I have a, I have a burning passion when it comes down to children, brethren. I, 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 I believe children are the heritage of the Lord. And if we don't spend time to nurture them, we are going to lose them. They have no interest in anything godly. And it's not only our children, you know, some of us adults, some of us big people. We are just here because we are here. We can't do it. Well, we can do better, but it look bad. Not sure. The aim of the conference is total membership involvement. It takes total commitment to the cause of Christ to get out of our dry bones. We have to wake up. We have to allow God to speak life over us. He has to breathe his breath of life in us. How can we hope to know more about Jesus if we don't spend any time with him? We claim he's our friend, but he only hears from us when he comes to church on Sabbath. Sometimes we are called upon to open the Bible, and we, we can't even find the Bible. We don't want to say amen. We don't want to open our mouths and give God the honor and the praise. We come to Sunday nights and Wednesday night meeting when we feel like. Because you give God enough on Sabbath. Not true. We have to get up, brethren. He has no other hands but ours. But make no mistake. God does not need us to finish his work. God does not need us to finish his work. The rocks will cry out, brethren. But I don't know about you. I don't want any rock to cry out my praise. I don't want any rock to tell of the goodness of Jesus. God has done so much for us that, brethren, we should be getting up and shouting. Brethren, we should be saying hallelujah. It is not easy, brethren. It is not easy. Sometimes I'm standing here and, brethren, you don't understand the struggles. But guess what? Sister Marina, I'm not giving up. I am pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day because I know the God that I serve. Brethren, you have to know the God that you serve. And God don't want to lose us. God don't want any one of us to be missing from his kingdom. He's begging. He's pleading. Come, come, my child. Give it all to Jesus. Let us speak life over the man in the streets. Let us speak life over our friends and neighbors. I don't like funerals, you know. And even if I don't know who is being buried, Sister Joni, I feel bad and I want to cry because I feel bad for the loved ones. This is how we should feel for the man in the street, our brothers and our sisters who are dying in sin. It should break our hearts that these people don't know God. How they don't have any interest in knowing God. We should be so moved to the fact that if you or I don't tell them about Jesus, they may never know. They are going to die in their sin. The song says, Sister Terry, Who's gonna tell them Jesus loves them? Who's gonna tell them there's a better way? Who's gonna warn them of the things coming upon them so God can turn their night today? If you know that song, sing it with us, brethren. Who's gonna tell them Jesus loves them? Who's gonna tell them there's a better way? Who's
was gonna warn them of the things coming upon them, so God can turn their nights to day. Brethren, who is gonna tell them? Who is gonna tell them? The rocks? The board? We have to tell them. We have to get up. We must tell them. We must warn them. We have to realize that God is right around the corner. He is just at the door. We must speak life over our walk with him. Oh, what a mighty army we would be if we totally surrender our all to Jesus. We must decide where we want to spend eternity. Where do we want to be, brethren? Where do you want to be? Where do I want to be? Let us not walk around with our bones clanking, but let us allow God to breathe his breath of life in us and bring others to know about him. Brethren, if you want to get out of your dry bones experience this morning, if you want to have a transformation in your spiritual life, I invite you to make that commitment today. Say before this year, God, I don't want to be dead. I want to be alive and on fire for you. I want to go out. I want to do your work. I want to tell someone that you love them and that you want them to be a part of your family. God is faithful in the midst of our unfaithfulness. Even when we drift away from God, he keeps running after us. He keeps running after us, brethren. If you have walked with God for that reason, and I just want to make an appeal right here, brethren. If for whatever reason you have been walking and you realize that right now you are in the valley of dry bones, you realize that you are D-E-A-D, -E dead. You realize that your connection to God is not as it should be, I'm gonna invite you to stand. If you believe, brethren, that you need to change, if you need a transformation in your walk today, I'm gonna invite you to stand. If you are burdened and don't get up because I'm begging you to get up here, you have to see the need. God is right around the corner. God is pleading. He's asking. Let us change our ways. If you have never walked before, if you have never walked before, and today you feel impressed to step forward and say, Lord, take my dead situations. Take what is making me broken. Take what is causing me not to connect with you, God. Remove it from me this morning. I invite you to make a walk, brethren. God is calling. Jesus is calling us, brethren. God is calling us out of our deadness. He's calling us. We can't just be dead man's bones. We can't just be connected because we are connected. We have to be deeply rooted and grounded in the gospel. We have to get on fire for God. We need to see the urgency of speaking life. We need to see the urgency, brethren, of not just living, not just occupying space, but we have to get active. And if that is your pledge today, if that is your pledge to walk and to ask God to speak life over your situation. I'm going to invite you wherever you are. Just bow your heads. Bow your heads, brethren. And let us pray. Mighty God, 
wonderful Father, our Savior, and our friend. Today we come in your presence, not because we are good, not because we are living, but because, God, we are dead. And if we are not dead yet, we are dying. Lord, help us this morning to claim your breath of life. Help us, oh God, to see the need to be revitalized. The need to get on fire. The need to go out and share your word with those around us. Help us, oh God, to have a transformation in our lives. Oh God, help us to speak life over our families. There are so many of us here today, God, that our families are torn asunder. Our marriages are broken. Our families are torn. Our children are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not walking the walk. But God, today we call upon your name. In the name of Jesus, we ask God that we reverse everything that is broken. We ask that you fix every broken problem here today, God. Help us not to live here the way we came, but help us, oh God, to live. Help us, oh God, to live as you want us to live. Help us to walk. Help us to talk like you. Help us, oh God, that we will reach out to our neighbors and our friends. Help us, oh God, to live in our lives, even in our homes, that even our family members who know us will know you. Because we can't hide from our families. They know exactly who we are. So help us, oh God, to make that difference today. Help us, oh God, to walk like you. Help us, oh God, to talk like you. Help us, oh God, to just be like you in every area of our lives. And for those who have not yet totally surrendered it all to you, help them, oh God, to make that step. Help them, oh God, to realize that now is not time to be playing around. The world has nothing to offer. The world has nothing to give. The devil wants company. But God, you have a place prepared for them. And you want them to be a part of your kingdom. Touch us today, Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on in our lives. Ride on in our broken situation. Help us, oh God, to speak life and not death. And Lord... Help us as we go today that we'll never, ever be the same again. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord much for that very special word to us as a congregation and to us as individuals. May we indeed embrace the life the Lord seek to give us. As through his word, we obey his will and submit ourselves to him. We thank you, Sister Campbell, that the Lord used you for to share his word to us. We bring this profitable time to its cessation with the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be consecrated Lord to thee 330 shall we stand Oh, boy. 
eternal Father and God. We thank you much, God, for gathering us into thine house of prayer for fellowship and for worship, to receive a word from you, for to draw us closer to you and to draw us to you. O oh Lord, may your word find place in our heart that we may live for you. Lord, may we embrace the power of life you give and that that life come from your life that you give for us. May we so commit ourselves to you, God, that our time on earth may be a glory in your sight and a blessing to man. Thank you again for your word. Thank you again for your messenger. We thank you, Lord, that we are privileged to hear from you one more time. May it do the good in us for the praise of your name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please enjoy your refreshment and we continue our Sabbath service as we meet at 3.30 this afternoon for Bible class. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>